Hello everybody, I am the Black Sigma, or you could just call me Eric, and... What? What? No. Uh, of course I'm not starting with MGS3. We went over this last time. I'm playing the franchise in order. You can see that I was already hovering over Metal Gear 2, because that's the game we're about to play. And I'll admit, this game... It's got a pretty bopping intro sequence. I'm not skipping this. But they had no right to put in this much of a bop. But also, showing the actual blueprints for the Metal Gear in this game is some of the best stuff. Honestly. Like... In the first game, we don't really get blueprints of the TX-55, and have no idea what its capabilities are, because... Well, it's never explained in-game. It's just in, like, the instruction manual. You can see the schematics for it. But... In this e intro sequence, we actually get to see all this stuff. Also, ignore what I am doing right now. I may have forgotten to put the game on my main monitor and was just looking over at the recording screen. <laughs> yeah. Seeing all the actual specs of the Metal Gear. Like, yeah, this camera. Also, spoilers, we don't know who that woman is. We know who Solid Snake is, obviously, but... Also, the scenario, Hideo Kojima. Good old Kojima. Mechanical design. The, the Tomohiro. Nishio. I don't know why I'm talking about this. I mean, uh, I didn't read any of the other credits. But also, in a VR simulation, this thing holds six missiles, which, you know, is significantly more dangerous than Rex's... Not Rex. TX-55's two-missile tank. Also, it's got a Gatling gun in the middle. Game designed by Kojima. Yeah. This is the Metal Gear D. It's got multiple missile launchers. Six nukes, two regular missiles. It's got a Gatling gun in the middle. But this is Metal Gear 2. Solid Snake. Not to be confused with Snake's Revenge. It is the late 1990s. The world is embarking on an age of peace and stability. Well, that's rare. Relations between the Cold War superpowers have thawed. Regional conflicts are being resolved. The threat of nuclear war is now a thing of the past. <laughs> you know, the 90s, when we nearly solved nuclear war. But there are some who do not desire peace. Some like Big Boss. Who is still alive, somehow. An atmosphere of tension begins to build in the Middle East. A military junta comes to power in Zanzibar land, a small nation bordering on the USSR, China, and the Middle East. That's a weird borderline. Zanzibar land attacks nuclear weapons disposal sites around the world, seizing those weapons that are still intact, 
and becomes the world's only nuclear power. It then begins to invade its neighbours at will. After renouncing nukes forever, the world is once again threatened by the spectre of nuclear war. Yeah, you know, the 90s, when the entire world agreed to renounce nukes. Thank you, PlayStation Network. Meanwhile, the world's oil supply, which was to last another 30 years, suddenly and unexpectedly dries up. Without a safe alternative source of energy, the world faces a severe energy crisis. Ah, still relying on fossil fuels. It is in these dire circumstances that Dr. Keo Marv, a, a Czech biologist, develops Oilix, a microbe that can synthesize high-grade petroleum. With this discovery, global tensions are once again on the rise. On his way to attend an American scientific conference, Dr. Marv is kidnapped by agents of Zanzibar land. So we discovered an alternative to fossil fuels, making our own. But, with its nuclear weapons and the secret of Oilix, Zanzibar land plans to achieve global military domination. A tiny microbe, only a few microns wide, is about to change the world forever. And it'll almost never be referenced in future games. Once again, the title. Metal Gear 2. Solid Snake. And at this point, the intro would loop. So it's time to start a game on the original difficulty. Why would I pick anything else? Here comes Solid Snake. Once again sent on a one-man sneaking mission. This is Snake. I've reached the infiltration point. Snake, right on time as always. I can't do a Colonel Campbell voice. Let's get started. Commencing Operation Intrude F014. I think that was F-O, not F-0, but... Let's go over the, this mission one more time. Your mission is to infiltrate Zanzibar land, and rescue the kidnapped Czech biologist, Dr. Keo Marv. Snake, we've provided you with a new anti-personnel sensor. Try switching it on. Roger, it's on. The white dots on your radar are enemy soldiers. The red dot is your current position. The radar is equipped with several other types of sensors as well. They should warn you of any unseen dangers. Take a look at your radar display. It shows a 9 screen area centered on your position. However, it may not work in small enclosed spaces. Also, if the enemy spots you, you won't be able to use the radar. The enemy will use a jammer to scramble it. Got it. Where can I find Dr. Marv? Well, Dr. Marv has a transmitter implanted in one of his molar teeth. When you get close to him, he'll show up as a red dot on your radar. So I just have to keep an eye out for the red dot. Snake, use frequency 140.85 for all future communications with me. Good luck. Over and out. One-man sneaking mission, huh? Using the power of a radar. Newly acquired at that. Oh shoot. I'm in a bad spot. I'm in a bad spot. Luckily that guy didn't turn around. Into the truck. A B1 ration. Yeah, there are different types of rations in this one. 
It's pretty slick. Use crawling to sneak through gaps in the fence, over and out. Crawling. Ah, by holding the X button, I crouch, and therefore can also crawl. Infiltration of Zanzibar land going relatively smoothly. Ah, crap. Uh, enemies have cones of vision for the first time in the franchise. They don't just see in straight lines like they used to. <laughs> Glad to have already been spotted on my infiltration. Whew. The cones of vision are pretty thin, but, you know, it's still enough that I can actually be spotted. Not like the first Metal Gear game where it's only straight lines. I did that on purpose. It was a debate to get around him. Get in the truck, Snake. This is fine. This is fine. See? I'll be perfectly safe as long as I stand right here. Whew. And there's not even... Yeah. All the enemies are off screen, but you can't sneak in through the front door. Use the vents over and out. Roger that. Using the vents. Ah yes, the classic. Ammunition in a vent. Um... No, I don't want to drop down there. Hey, the foxhound loading screen. Nice. But also, there's nowhere I can go from here. Here we are, on a floor that's actually useful. I'm Holly, Holly White. I infiltrated Zanzibar land a month ago, posing as a journalist. So I know pretty much how things work around here. I'll help you in any way I can. My frequency is 140.15. Call me later. I'll call you whenever I need to. But also, through this door, appears to be a bunch of guards. Can't go in there though. I think you can crawl under tanks? Yeah, you can. Ah, uh, yes. The classic. Anyway, I'm just gonna try and avoid enemy presence as much as I can. Because, you know, I'm not very well equipped at the moment. Uh oh. This is fine. This is not fine really swarm at me from all the way over there. Luckily, there's a little hidey hole here. And good evasion. Now I can't get through that door either. Go 
know what I'm... I'm really gonna need to find a key card, huh? Ah, surveillance camera. Okay, so up here... I can go through this door. Hmm, these two guys... I don't think there's anything to do in here at the moment. But, something interesting. Attention! The Zanzibar Land National Anthem. It's beautiful. But also, on screen at the top here, that is a, uh, you know, blueprint of the actual layout of Zanzibar Land. Why, why aren't you standing up, Snake? Thank you. But as you can see, there's a tunnel through the basement that leads to the second building of Zanzibar Land. I found it, the central elevator shaft. Punch a button and get in there, snake. Now we're going up, because I said so. Not that I remember where to go. But also, annoyingly, like in later games, the catwalks make noise, so being alerted here is very easy to... Ah, damn it. First death. Honestly to be expected. Aha! Keycard. Now I'm just gonna stand in front of this door so I can do the easiest way to get out of evasion. Knocking out anyone who looks for me. Card one. Nice. Uh oh. Hey, I got that guy before he even saw me. Nice. Binoculars? Probably a little more useful in this game than the last one. Now if I remember correctly, the guards are gonna head towards the elevator. Well, some of them are, but not all of them apparently. Still, gotta check all around here. There's one door I can't open, my ammo is full... And I think that's every screen checked. So I'm gonna hop in the elevator... And up we go! Oh, this one doesn't go up. It skips straight to the basement one, huh? Right, because one of them is out of order, generally. Well, this is a maze of a floor. Ah, the power of distraction. What was that noise? Oops. Hey! Infrared goggles, nice. If only I had done better with my distract the guard play. <laughs> hmm, I can go up further in the right elevator. Hmm. Hmm. Something feels off about this. Ah, right.
right. There's this sensor that emits waves that'll pick you up. And this is infrared lasers. I've seen this sort of... Oh, come on! It switched as I went through. Screw it! Into the waste chute, snake! <laughs> Whee! Throwing myself into their garbage disposal was a great idea. Hang on, pick up the... Well, guess I'm not picking up the garbage bag. Oh, I did pick up the garbage bag. And I needed to pull out a key card. Oops. But, uh, yeah. The garbage bags do occasionally actually have useful items. Come on. That one was useless. Go, snake. Ah, the sewers of Zanzibar. Filled with mines, because why wouldn't they be? Ah, and this gets me to the elevator shaft. And I can't go through that door. Great, no point being down here yet. But I know, based on the diagram, that these sewers connect to building too. So I'll have to go there eventually. Now let's do this, but better this time. And we wait for change. There we go. Seems like this one doesn't change. Keycard one. Gas mask. Great. Cool. I'll need that later. Hang on. Marv is on this floor. The doctor I'm looking for, he's in the room south of here. But obviously I can't walk through because these lasers are unmoving. And somehow I don't expect that I can just open that door with keycard one. But I'm gonna try it anyway. Here we go! What do you know, it wasn't actually card one. Anyway, checking out the rest of this floor. Ah, there's no lasers or anything as long as we're in evasion status. But he doesn't look behind him. Yeah. Good job, dude. Well, since I can't go through door to the right here... That's the end of my search of... This side of this floor, at least. There's still two other doors I can attempt. South door... Hmm. There's a guard in here. Oh! Hello, gas room. You see, this game implements an oxygen meter. However, said oxygen meter depletes more slowly with the inclusion of... Huh. The, the gas mask slows the oxygen depletion. Meh heh heh, foolish foxhound! Dr. Marv isn't here! Figures that Foxhound would use such a cheap transmitter. You guys are really behind the times. What? You were a fake, Dr. Marv. 
I am Black Ninja, a former member of NASA's Extraterrestrial Environment Special Forces Unit. They're what? Now let's just see how strong the world's most advanced Black Ops unit really is. Show me what you've got, Foxhound. Oh no, he teleports. Ow, but he has ninja stars that go over the terrain. I've already used one ration. Damn this man's teleporting shenanigans. Oh, my bullets go over boxes too. Why wasn't I just shooting him from the start? Oh, I might actually fucking die to this dude. And I'm dead. Let's try this again a little smarter. Well, crouching is not the smart play. God damn you- oh, come on. I missed you by like a pixel, man. My handgun has a much more limited range than I thought it did. Come on. Tanking a few hits so I can hit him back is honestly probably worth it. He's the first boss in the game. How hard could it actually be? He's getting low, but so am I. Let's go again! This time, not attempting to tank things. Just have to find some time to get good shots in, rather than... Uh, God damn it. Fudge. <laughs> Oh, come on. I can't be taking ep hits every time I go to hit him. What? I hit right before I made that shot, you jackass. Yeah, I just had to time out my shots. The dude had invincibility frames before, so tanking all the hits to rapid fire him was not the play. I should just be hitting him occasionally. Oh, come on, I hit up! But no, Snake decided to- I didn't face up at any point and just shot to the right. Here we go again. One hit without taking a hit. Two hits without taking a hit. This is going a little better for me. Not perfectly better, but a little. God damn it. What? How did that shot miss? I'm quite certain that went through your character model, sir. It went through your sprite, rather, because it's not 3D models, obviously. What are you doing? What? Mm, okay, yeah, I was slightly too far to the right on that one. Come on. Got him. Ah. Uh. I hit up and Snake didn't face up. Come on, man. He's getting more frequent in his teleports. Oh, okay, I was too far right. Oh, come on, you teleport as I shoot. Come on. Oh, he's going red. That that means he's very low. 
One more hit. One or two. What? Oh, that was it. Ooh. Snake. Who are you? How do you know my name? It's me. Schneider. Kyle Schneider. Remember me? From the Resistance? Back in Outer Heaven? Schneider. You were in the Resistance at Outer Heaven. But I thought they killed you. You've still got a lot to learn, Snake. I was almost killed, but not by them. By you, and your country. What are you saying? Snake, after you destroyed Metal Gear, NATO launched a massive bombing campaign against, against Outer Heaven. They launched a bombing campaign against, against Outer Heaven? But it self-destructed. What was the point? All of our resistance fighters and the children of Outer Heaven, they didn't care about any of us. There was no escape from the flames. They died like animals in a cage. I... I can't believe this. Think about it. The children of Outer Heaven were originally war orphans and refugees from all over the world. They were a liability, and NATO didn't want to deal with them. No, that can't be. They wouldn't bomb the innocent people in that military base. You're no different. They'll forget about you, too. But he wasn't like them, who? He came and saved us from annihilation. He forgave us for what we'd done. He gave us a new land to call a home. A new family. He did? You mean... Snake, you'll understand soon what a wonderful man he is. Snake, I owe you a debt. There's no hate between us. I'll tell you where Dr. Marv is. It's what he would want me to do. Find the man who's guarding the cell where Dr. Marv is being held. Follow that man, and he should lead you straight to the cell. You can tell him by his green beret. He should be on the first floor. Got that? A green beret. Follow the man in the green beret. Huh. I can't believe this. My own nation turned against innocent people after I destroyed Outer Heaven? And Big Boss. That must be who he was talking about. Big Boss was the one that saved them? That can't be. Big Boss was my enemy in the end. Could it be that he's a more complex character than I initially believed? I guess we'll find out. Or at least we'll find where Dr. Marv is being held. In the next episode. Bye. <laughs>